Uh, so I do encourage you to come out and see our tribute to Kevin Brownlow um, on his way to receive an honorary Oscar uh, uh, later next week. Um, we are... Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Joyce McKinney. We've all been through that, haven't we, girlfriend? <laughs> but the thing I always uh, resented so much is when these reporters would use the word obsession. I wasn't any different than any woman in this auditorium. I was looking for that magical guy, don't we all, ladies? That handsome prince. The, ones that make, <laughs> the one that makes us <laughs> our heart beat faster. That's what I was looking for. And I had a very dangerous cult taken away from me. And that's one of the things that concerned me about this film. I don't think there was enough stress on that. Um, the Mormon cult has destroyed the lives of thousands of people and caused suicides. What they do to minority groups, blacks, gays, women, is terrible. And someday I hope to tell the true story of what the Mormons did to me and to the man I loved. And uh, that's, that's my goal before I die, before I kick the bucket and go to heaven, I want to at least make sure that the, the story is told about that because I think that's what's left out of this film. It's one of the things that bothers me about it. And it's not funny. And two of the guys that are in this film, I've never met them. I have never met um, Troy Williams. I've never met, um, what's the other guy? Kent H Gavin. I do know Kent Gavin was involved in the burglary in my, my home. And I really resent them being allowed to tell the Joyce McKinney story when I've never met them and pretending they were in my bedroom with me and my fiance. I mean, I don't sell tickets. So I just thought you guys should know that, that I didn't know these two of these people that were in this movie. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Do we have any questions? I don't mind. Go ahead. Did I scare you to death? <laughs> my story is actually a very deep story. It's a very intellectual story. And it's, it's not a comedy. It's not a sex comedy. It's not silly. It's not funny. It's scary. Because so many people have been hurt. And I always felt like I had this terrible burden on my little old shoulders to tell what Mormonism had done to people. And I didn't know why the senseless tragedy happened to me. So many times I would stay awake at night and say, why, why, why didn't we just be able to get married and have kids and a little leave it to beaver house with a picket fence? But I think there was a reason for it. I think that the man upstairs wanted me to alert people to what Mormonism does to destroy people. It's not funny, it's scary. And when you have a group that teaches there's gonna be a new world order and a theocracy reestablished and they wanna get their own president, hello Mitt. <laughs> it's pretty scary, it's pretty scary. And there was a very important part of my story that was left out in this film. And I have a copy of the transcript. Anybody that wants to come up and talk to me after the thing, you're welcome to look at it. But um, I have a transcript of the telephone conversation between me and Kirk Anderson. And in this telephone conversation, it's when our line was tapped. It was actually illegally tapped by the Mormons when he and I talked the last time. And in this conversation, he says that they are flying in PR teams from Utah to handle damage control. Spin doctors, I think they're called. And he said, they're all out there, hundreds of them out there saying um, uh, something like, uh, why, why, why were they gone so long, or this, or what did you do? And they were actually telling the, the press, these PR teams, that I had kidnapped and raped him. Folks, I have never been charged with raping a man. 
Hello. I've never been convicted of raping a man. In fact, it is criminal libel anyone who says that. I have never been charged with raping Kirk Anderson. In England, according to Hallsbury statutes, a woman can't even be charged with raping a man. And I have lived under this terrible lie for so long. My mother, when she heard about this film, she's in a hospital right now. She went into shock. It took us years to get over the pain and the heartache. Years. Years. Years of battling agoraphobia and trauma and depression. Any of you guys ever been depressed or sad? That's what it did to me. And it was for 33 years that my family had to go through this. And now I feel like with this film, the pain is opening up again. And it's not funny to me. It's scary to me because my story still hasn't been told. I hope it will be someday. I hope somebody comes up to me and says, you know, let's, but you know, I have passed a lie detector test. I've passed it. And I'll take one. And anybody wants to administer another, I will. Because I know, before my God, that I just love somebody and I fought for that love. And one of the things that concerned me about this film is the way Mark Lipson, the producer, treated me. He, he, while Earl was interviewing me, I don't know if Earl knows about this, he ransacked my suitcase and he took a whole bunch of pictures of me without my consent. And they were actually in this film. He actually took them. And they were used, I feel, in a libelous and slanderous fashion when there's a real story there to be told that could have affected the lives of so many people and it's not been told. And I hope it is someday because my story's not a sex comedy. It's not silly. It hurt me when you guys laughed. I mean, maybe it was funny to you. Maybe you just laughed out of politeness or maybe it just hit you that way. But it hurt me when you guys laughed because I thought, they really don't know the story. They don't know the heartache or the fear or the trauma that I went through. It's like yesterday for me. And I think, I don't think I can die happy until I get that story told. I still want to tell it. And after this film came out, I just sat up night after night without sleep, going through all the reviews, saying, Joyce McKinney kidnapped a rapist. People thought I kidnapped and raped a man. And the chloroform part in this film, first of all, let me explain. There's been five different versions of the Mormon story that their PR men released. First version says I chloroformed him. And while he was out, I was supposed to have my way with him for three days. Okay, second version says that I used a gun. Then by 1984, we're Joyce, down to I'm, knife I'm, point. I'm sorry, just because we have to let the room go before we get through all five oh. versions. But, but we are very honored to, to have you with us tonight. And I think I can speak for many viewers of this film who find you a totally fascinating and charming character. Well, I hope they don't think I'm an S&M film. hooker. <laughs> Do you think so? Oh, ma, can I kiss you? Come on, kiss them. I'm serious. And that I, worried I, me so much. I mean, and the one with the naked mermaid body in here? The naked mer... Where did you guys get the naked mermaid picture? I was so prebarrassed on that one. I think I can also speak for many filmmakers who are in the audience who would tell you, don't ever read the reviews, Joyce. Don't ever read oh, the do reviews. You, believe, you know, there's a dignity crisis when you read your own press. Tom, I have a bone to pick with you. You said you that I kidnapped and raped him, too. I this did one, not. I did not say oh, that. Oh, who wrote that then? Let's say what I mean. It's like that little gossip game, you know, you played when you were a kid and you sit in a circle. And one person says, the cat crossed the road. And the other says, the dog crossed the road. And you know, the time it gets around, you don't recognize it. That's what I have to go through. The paparazzi sat in front of my house for 33 years. End to end, I mean, end to end, they wouldn't leave. I couldn't even go out and walk my dog or feed the horse. Now, can you imagine that? Joyce, I know that I can speak for everyone in this audience to say, that it makes my night, and I think it makes their night, to have you here with us. And thank you very much for being here with us. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Errol Morris, Joyce McKinney. I, uh, I always wanted this to happen. <laughs> I always wanted to be <laughs> on a stage with Joyce. Uh, with Read his Twitter page. Read the man's Twitter page. I think he's an obsession. I think he's obsessed with me. Joyce is my favorite protagonist. Nobody even comes a close <laughs> second. Wait a second. I am not different from any of the other men in this story. Dirty old man? Is that what you're saying, Earl? I'm not any different from any of the other men. We're all obsessed is, with you. Is it? I 
I'm 60 years old. Is it the traditional male rape fantasy? I can't figure it out. I'm just a little farm girl, you know? But, but <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I was from a very religious Christian family, believe it or not, very religious. And I was taught you save your virginity till you meet the handsome prince. Is that such a bad thing? Thank you. I love these people. I'm taking these people out to dinner in the third row here. <laughs> Joyce. Mm, mm. Thank you. <laughs> oh, there's so much I need to say. And <laughs> you think I should? Of course you, you should. You think anybody will believe it after all this? Yes. Are you serious? Yes. Is there a producer in the house? <laughs> Universal, are you out there? Really, do you think it, that they will believe it? I just... You don't think they'll... Really? That makes me feel so good. Oh, that makes me feel... So, oh, gosh. I love this woman. <laughs> I, I felt really bad when I first saw the movie. When I first got the print from Mark, I cried. In fact, I threw up. I thought, oh, my gosh, what are people going to think about me? They think I'm an S&M hooker. <sighs> And those ads were not mine. Those, the ones that said blonde beauty, how many blonde beauties are there in Hollywood, you know? And, and what was the other one you used there? I wish you'd let me help him with the edit. I have a doctorate in film, by the way, guys. Does that shock you? I actually have an IQ above room temperature, too. But I would love to have helped and actually said, uh-uh, take that out. That's, mm, no, edit that. Really, because there was some stuff in there that I'm thinking, where'd they get, and that, that guy, Peter Torrey, I met the guy one time. Joyce, I think Booker's going to the bathroom on the stage, so I need to get him Oh, off. he's going on Earl. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for coming out. It's a night to remember Earl Morris, Joyce McKinney.